What's up guys, we're going to be installing a LAMP stack on Arch Linux. What exactly is a LAMP stack? It's one of the most common methods of creating a website or a web app. It's consisting of four building blocks, which is what the acronym LAMP stands for. Linux, Apache, which is the HTTP server, MySQL, Relational Database Management System, and PHP which is a server-side programming language. At the moment, we're already running on Linux. This is going to be part one where we install the Apache HTTP server, but it's not going to have MySQL or PHP running at that stage. We'll install those in later parts of this short series. Just a quick note before we move on. In most cases, LAMP stacks are not installed on Arch Linux, but they can be. In most cases, they're going to be installed on something like Ubuntu server or some kind of Red Hat distribution or its various derivatives. For example, it's common to run a LAMP stack on CentOS, which is derived from Red Hat Linux, and also something like Amazon Linux 2. Amazon Linux 2 most commonly runs on an EC2 instance, which is a virtual system that runs on Amazon Web Services Cloud. So in some senses, it might seem out of place installing Apache and a LAMP stack on Arts Linux, but ultimately we can install a web server on whichever Linux distro that we want. And in this case, there may be some useful application. For example, we might be testing a web app, or perhaps we want to run an instance of a vulnerable web application. For example, something like Mutiliday, which is OWASP's or one of OWASP's vulnerable web applications, and it just so happens to run on a LAMP stack. So if we want to build that from source rather than one of the other installation methods such as via Docker, then we're going to need to have a LAMP stack or a LAMP server in place. So there are various reasons why we might want to install a LAMP stack on Arch Linux, and that's what we're going to be doing in this short series. So let's get started with the first aspect of this. We want to install the Apache HTTP server. Let's start by firing up a terminal and we'll first run a search for the package. So we'll use the command sudo pacman hyphen capital S lowercase s Apache. And looking down that list of results, we can see that Apache is actually already installed at this stage. It ships by default with Black Arch Linux. If you have a bare bones install of Arch, maybe it doesn't have the HTTP server Apache already in place. If that's the case, and we'll do this now just for a demonstration, we could run the command sudo pacman hyphen s. Everything's the same here apart from we just use one uppercase s, which is going to install a package. So just as a side note here, the two s's means to search for a package the uppercase and the lowercase s. The single uppercase s means we already know which package we want and we're asking Arch to install that package. So we'll do that right now. It is of course already installed and it's going to tell us that saying warning, it's up to date. But since you asked reinstalling anyway, just choose yes to proceed with installation. Obviously in the case of this system, there's no point doing this because it's already installed but just so you can see how it works. Now, one of the common questions regarding Apache is the difference between Apache and HTTPD. And you'll notice that depending on the system, it might be referred to as Apache 2, or it might be referred to as HTTPD. So what is the difference? Well, there isn't really a difference. HTTPD just refers to the daemon that runs as part of the Apache package. So if we run the command, systemctl status httpd will get the status of that httpd server, the Apache web server. You can see in this case, it's inactive. So it's not going to work at the moment. Now we can start that service, but first of all, we're going to enable that service. And you might wonder, well, what's the difference between starting a service and enabling a service? Enabling a service refers to how it's going to behave at startup. So if we use the command sudo systemctl enable 
httpd, that's going to cause the HTTP daemon to run at startup every single time we boot our system. Now it could be that you don't want this functionality, but in some cases it's helpful. Simple example of that is when we are running the SSH daemon, we often like that to open or start itself at boot time. And the reason for that is we can reboot a system and then we can access it headlessly. So we can just SSH into that system without having to first access the terminal through a connected monitor and then enable that SSH service every time we boot the system. It's helpful if every single time a system reboots, once it's booted up, we can immediately connect to it headlessly via SSH. We might want something similar here where if we reboot a certain system, we want the web server to immediately start working on boot rather than having to manually enable the web server every time. So we'll run that command right now. It's going to ask for our password. The next thing we're going to do is actually start that process because if we take a look at it right now, we can see that it's still inactive. So it's enabled. If we were to reboot right now, it would start as a service, but we're not going to reboot. We're going to start it manually. So we're going to use sudo systemctl start httpd. Let's have another look at it again. And now we can see that it's running. Now we can pretty much demonstrate that it's working by firing up a web browser and connecting to localhost on port 80, which is where HTTP traffic is usually sent by default. In fact, we don't even really need to specify port 80 because the browser is going to assume that that's the port we want to connect to the server on by default. We can just type localhost. Now we're getting index of forward slash. What this means is the server is working. We have connected to the Apache server and it's linking us to a specific directory, but there's nothing in the directory at this stage. Now we're going to think about how we can configure the Apache server in the next part of this series. But for now, I'm just going to tell you where that directory is by default with Arch. And it's one of the things we're going to change. And the reason is simple. I like to have my web files in a different directory and we can do that. We've cd'd into the serve directory. Let's have a look at the contents of this and note that we have a HTTP folder. So let's cd into that. Let's take a look. Surprise, surprise. There's nothing in this location. Now, one of the things that Apache is going to do by default, and again, we can configure this, but by default, it's going to look in that directory for an index.html file. And if it finds one, it's going to render the contents of that HTML file to our web browser. So let's test that. We are going to create an index.html file in this directory. So let's use sudo touch index.html. And we can see our newly created file there. And we're going to vim into that. And we're going to do something very simple. In fact, this is the classical thing to do with any new programming language or web server. Is we're going to put a h1 tag. And we're going to say, hello world. I'm going to close that h1 tag. We're going to write and quit out of Vim. I'm going to refresh our page. And there we go. We can see that the browser is having the contents of that index.html file returned to it. And it's successfully passing the contents of that HTML file. And it's rendering the output that we see on the screen right now, which is clearly a capitalized large font version of Hello World. So that's a basic web server up and running. It's not going to work with PHP yet. It's not going to work with MySQL. And there may be some changes we want to make to the configuration itself of Apache. We're going to do that in the next part of the series. Thanks for watching, guys.